It streams in the desert. You know, it's funny, I hear people tell me about different circumstances in their life about how, say, the stock market goes up or the stock market goes down, or the cloud on the horizon has a big billowing form and we know that because of its big billowing darkness that there's thunder and lightning and that we look at it and say, oh, it's going to rain, uh-oh, I better get my umbrella. Or we watch it as it goes across the sky and then it turns out to be one cloud and then it passes by. You know, faith was never meant to be determined by circumstance. You weren't supposed to come to a place where every time something happened, you reacted by letting those circumstances dictate what you should do. People watch the stock market and they say, oh, I got to sell, oh, I got to buy, oh, I got to do this, oh, I got to do that. God never allowed people to manipulate Jesus when he was riding into Jerusalem on the donkey. They wanted to declare him king and they wanted him to deliver them from Roman rule right then, right now. And he said no, literally. He, he walked away from the crowd and would not let them make him king. You see, God has a purpose and a plan for you to do what he wants to accomplish. And as long as you're in his will, doing what he wants his way, you will accomplish that because he loves you and he knows that you will enjoy what he's arranged for you to participate in. But if you go against his will, then because he loves you, he will stop you from trying to do what you think you should. Because sometimes the head that's beating against the wall is your own. And you're not fighting the devil. You're not fighting the flesh. You might be fighting God and not doing what he told you to do in the first place. The choice is always yours to determine what God has you for you to do today. Now, there are lots of tools he gives you to help you to determine what his will is today as he speaks to you. Reading your Bible, praying, spending time with Christians that are of the same ilk as you, that understand you, that know you, that look at you and say, you know, you get carried away about the stock market. Maybe you ought to put it aside today and, you know, maybe read the Word of God. Or someone that, you know, loves you, like your wife or your children or or maybe your pastor or a teacher or someone around you, even Jesus himself, who can say to you, today, while it is today, hear my voice, listen to me, read what God says to you today. And that might be for you. Because we need to know and we need to always have the assurance that no matter what happens, whether it be a cyclone, a tornado, a hurricane, whether there be a nuclear reactor that blows up down the street or whether there be just the beautiful sunshine on your day today it shouldn't affect you in any way why because death has no power over you neither does life you have the choice to walk with god today who created the universe and he will take care of you every step of the way he loves you he's caring for you he's taking the time to know you and he's taking the time to listen when you call upon him. Today, listen to him as he speaks to you and shares with us what he would have us to do as we walk with him every day. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, there shall be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will joy in the God of my salvation. Habakkuk 3, 17 and 18. Observe, I ask you, how calamitous or how disastrous the circumstances here supposed and how heroic a faith is expressed. It is really as if he said, though I should be reduced to so great extremity, <coughs> it should be expressed as if though I were reduced to so great a catastrophe as not to know where to find my food, and though I should look around me and find an empty house in a desolate field and see the marks of divine 
scourge where I have once seen the fruits of God's bounty, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I think these words are worthy of being written as with a diamond on a rock forever. Oh, that by divine grace they might be deeply engraved in each one of our hearts. Precise as the form of speaking in the text is, it is evidently implies or expresses these following particulars, that in the day of his distress he would fly to God, he would turn to God, he would go to God in his distress, that he would maintain a holy composure of spirit under his dark dispensation. He would not react to the circumstances, he would act upon the difference of having a relationship with God as opposed to having God relate to him in a way of circumstance. Nay, that in the midst of all these he would indulge in a sacred joy in God. He would recognize that because he is saved, none of these things will move him and allow his salvation to rule his heart and mind, knowing that irregardless of what circumstances are, he is, and always has been, and forever shall be, on God's mind, in his heart, and in his hand, as he has saved him from his sins and provided a way of escape for him to be his man of God on the hour, in the hour of need, that not only of his need, but those around him. And a cheerful expectation from him, knowing full well that he can trust he whom he would confidence in for not only his eternal life, but for his temporal life in this world, that he can provide for the circumstances of his need, either through others, through friends, through neighbors, through relatives, through church, through supernatural provision, or through natural provision, that in all these things, God is moving and doing and accomplishing for him. Heroic confidence, illustrious faith, and unconquerable love. When you know God, it doesn't matter the vessel God uses. It doesn't matter the tools he employs. It doesn't matter any of these things that we think we know, whether Red Cross, Blue Cross, the cross, it is the salvation of God and the determination of His Holy Spirit, how He decides to work with you, in you, for you, to you, and accomplish always all about you. The revelation of Jesus Christ to this world that He might save some and that He might cause you to know in the name of His Son that He will always be with you, irregardless of the circumstances you find yourself in. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and will always love you as you are, as He changes you from what you are to what you will be, because He's the author and the finisher of your faith, and He will bring you through to His place, where He has prepared for you to go in a destination that isn't what you call home here, but what he calls home for you.